This is the battle between the Mac Mini M1 versus MacBook Pro M1 versus the top spec MacBook Pro with an Intel processor from 2019. For this test, I will use the Geekbench 5. Then I will do the, for me, most interesting and useful test, the Final Cut Pro test. In Geekbench 5, I will first run the CPU test and then the compute test for Metal and OpenCL. In Final Cut Pro 10, I will import a five minute sample video that I filmed with my Sony A7S III. That clip is recorded in 4K and the file format is XAVCS. 25 frames per second and 10 bit 422. In the Final Cut Pro 10 test, I will test how long it takes to import the file into the computer. Then we'll see if we can edit the file without wasting time and create a proxy file. Then we'll see how long time it takes to transcode that five minute clip into proxies if we will need that. Last I'll test how long time it will take to export that five minute clip so it could be uploaded to YouTube, for example. My MacBook Pro from fall 2019 can definitely not edit those files without first creating a proxy. So this will be a super interesting test. During these tests, I will also monitor the temperature of the computers and the CPUs. And for these two MacBook Pros, I will also monitor the battery consumption. But Mats, for the 2019 MacBook Pro, it has a battery that is almost two years old. That's not fair. It's a very old battery. That's why I went out of my way and make sure these old guy actually have a brand new battery. So I actually received this one from Apple today with a brand new battery. All three computers are running the Big Sur 11.4 and for Final Cut Pro 10, we run the 10.5.3. So let's start the test, but first, just let us compare the price levels of these three Macs. This Mac Mini M1 costs 699 US dollars. And this is the very base model with just 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabyte SSD hard drive. This MacBook Pro M1 cost 1,899 US dollars for 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of SSD hard drive. A side note here is that this M1 MacBook Pro is also available in a lot smaller version where the cheapest one has a 256 gigabytes of SSD drive, eight gigabytes of ROM. That would be the same as this Mac mini that we have here. And that one should cost 1,299 US dollars. The 2019 MacBook Pro has an eight core Intel i9 processor with 512 gigabytes of SSD drive and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that was priced at $2,969. Then you maybe wonder why I don't have the same spec on the MacBook Pro as the Mac mini. And well, if you search for tests between M1 Mac mini versus M1 MacBook Pro, you will see that those tests will be almost identical. And I will link to one of the tests below. And that's why I would like to test two different setups to make sure and see if these bigger RAM and bigger SSD drive actually makes any difference. Let's start the battle. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna check the battery levels on these computers. This one, we start with 100% battery, 68% battery, and Mac Mini, doesn't have any battery. The first thing we're gonna do is to use the Geekbench 5 and run the CPU benchmark test on all three computers. So let's start those ones. Start, start, and start. So now the M1 computers are about halfway through the tests. This Intel has a little bit left until it's halfway. We can see the speed of the fan on the MacBook Pro is zero RPM. On this MacBook Pro, it's up to about 2000 RPM. And well, on this one, it's stuck at the base speed that is 1700 RPM, but you you can't hear that 1700, that, that MacBook Mini is quiet, dead quiet. So that one is done. We are ending up at 37 degrees, 42, 35 degrees, 32. And this one is still not done. Oh shit, look, it's up on yellow. The CPU core is up over 90 degrees. And now you can really hear the fan. The fan is up to 3,500 RPM. All CPU cores are up to yellow, over 90 degrees on all. Ooh, even red, 100 degrees, 100 degrees. Whoa, that's a big difference. It's still not done. And I mean, that is what I'm experiencing as well, especially when I'm editing. Now it's done. Now let's see the temperature. It's 49 and 67. So both these M1 
had about yeah, it was 37 degrees 35 degrees in the uh, average computer this one was 49 uh, the CPU was 42 degrees 32 degrees and 67 degrees so this MacBook Pro even when it's a lot larger it has two fans it's getting a lot lot hotter and see what happened with the battery the MacBook Pro is still at 100 percent this one is at 63 percent we started at 68 whoa we started at 68 okay let's see the results the single core was 1736 single core 1114 and single core 1747 on the multi-core we ended up at 7617 6500 and 7683 So even here the Mac Mini gets a higher score. So let's go over to the compute test and let's run the metal first. Start, start and start. And for the MacBook Pro, I'm actually running these tests on the graphic card that I don't really know which one it is. I can put it up on the screen. So the temperatures now on this MacBook Pro are 36, 37. Here we have 32, 29. And here we have 40, 51. So again, the Mac Mini is the be best one to keep the temperatures down than the MacBook Pro M1. And that one is already done. And that one is done, so they were about the same. These poor MacBook Pro from 2019 doesn't really keep up here. Now it's done. Okay, let's check the results. The Mac Mini with the lowest spec, the cheapest one, is the one that performs best. And the one that performs worst is the MacBook Pro. Let's take the next test. Let's take the OpenCL. So let's start. Start, start, start. We are done there, done. And we are done on all three computers. Again, Mac Mini wins, MacBook Pro comes second, and this MacBook Pro, the old geezer, comes last. So this is it for the Geekbench test. Let's see what's happening with the batteries here. This MacBook Pro M1 ad is still at 100%. This geezer is down at 63%. Oh, so that is the same that we had before we run this test. Well, that's good. And now it's time to open up Final Cut create a new library. These new libraries are going to be saved on the internal hard drive. Usually I work off a external SSD, but for this test we're going to run on the internal hard drive. Let's start the import so we can take the time. We are adding it to the library we created, copying to library. We don't transcode to anything at this point. And let's start the import. Okay, we're getting close, 90%, 92, 95, 98, and we are done. So it took 33 seconds, the temperature is 38, 37. Let's take this Mac Mini first, import. There, we're done, 31 seconds, and the temperature is 39, 28. So it was actually two seconds faster to import this five minute clip to the Mac Mini M1 compared to the MacBook Pro M1. That is, that is interesting. And I actually did this test before and I got the same result. Let's try on the 2019 MacBook Pro. Let's click import. 92, 95, 99, done. 31 seconds, whoa! Temperature is 53, 53. So the import on the MacBook Pro 2019 was actually the same as the Mac Mini. This brand new MacBook Pro M1 was the slowest one, not by much, it was just two seconds. So again, the Mac Mini was the coldest one, MacBook Pro second, and the MacBook Pro 2019 was the warmest one. So let's see what happened with the batteries. So the MacBook Pro, M1 is down to 98%, so we lost 2%. 
This MacBook Pro is down to 59%. Here we lost 4%. And well, the Mac Mini doesn't have a battery still. So the next thing is to see if we can edit these on the timeline on, on these computers without creating a proxy first, because on the MacBook Pro, that is impossible, especially if you start cutting things. If you're just gonna play a straight film without any cuts or transitions or anything, it works, but as soon as you put anything on it, it's just skipping so many frames. So let's start with the MacBook Pro M1. One cut there, one cut there, one cut there. We switch those two around, and we're gonna create a basic transition there, there, and there. And do the same on the Mac Mini. And I have background rendering on, on all these three computers. So let's see how long time it takes to create these proxies. Let's create proxy media, ProRes proxy and 50% frame size. Start. 95 and 100. Okay, that took one minute and 22 seconds to create the proxies. 50% frame size and start. So if we have the same pattern as before, the Mac Mini should actually be done a little bit before the MacBook Pro. And we were done at one minute and 22 seconds on the MacBook Pro. Oh, it was two seconds slower on this one. 124. But remember, this is the base model. This is the cheapest one you can buy. And this one is one of the most expensive MacBook Pro M1s you can buy. Transcode media, proxy, and start. Okay, we're up to 10% and 30 seconds. This is taking a long time. And now the fan start. Now you can, oh, look, the CPU, look here. It's going up on red. The average computer is 62 degrees, the CPU is 91, and we are only at 25%. Oh my gosh, this is just remarkable. Look, now it goes up on red also, over 100 degrees. And we are, now that Mac Mini, MacBook Pro was done, now the Mac Mini was done, and on this MacBook Pro from 2019, we're at 35%. Look here, the fans were up on red. Five and a half thousand RPM. It's completely going nuts, it's just taking off. We are up to two minutes. 47%, 48%, and look at this fan speed. It's just going crazy up on red to try to cool down this computer. Average computer temperature is 63 degrees, CPU 90 or 89. You can probably hear this computer. This little boy didn't even turn on its fans. So we are coming up to three minutes on this one. There is three minutes, we're up to 73%, 98, 99. And 100, four minutes and 10 seconds. Look at this difference. 122, 124, and four minutes, 10 seconds. You can see who's the winner here. So the last test is to do the export test on this one. Oh yeah, let's see the battery also after doing this. This one is down to 96%. This one is down to 43%. So this one lost 2%, this one lost 16%. I mean, that's how it is. With this one, I need to have it plugged in all the time if I'm gonna do any editing because it's just going crazy. Okay, so time to do the export test. File, share, YouTube and Facebook, settings to 4K faster encode. Then we're gonna save it and share. And as we know from the earlier tests I've done from this export setting is that the export is actually done at 50%, not 100%. So we just need to keep an eye on it so we don't miss when it's actually done sharing. I can link to that video up here also so you can see that video about the different export settings. So now we're up to 45%, we should be done in 4% now. Remember, this is just a five minute clip. And we are up to two and a half minutes, 48%. 49% and 50% and it's done. So two minutes and 42 seconds for the export. And the temperature is on 41 degrees in average computer temperature and 39 degrees on the CPU. The battery is down to 95%. So we lost 1% when we exported this five minute clip. Now let's take this Mac Mini 
reset the timer and save. So we're up to 45% is 5% left. It's 2 minutes and 20. We had 2 minutes and 42 seconds on this MacBook Pro. You see it's cutting it close. 49. 50. Oh, 2 minutes and 42 seconds. It was exactly the same time. That was cool. So 2 minutes and 42 seconds for the export on the Mac Mini base model and on these higher spec with higher RAM model of the MacBook Pro. The higher RAM would definitely benefit you when you actually start doing the edits, so it's probably better to do edits on because I had that experience before when I tried, I was using all the RAM on that one pretty early when I was doing edits. But when it comes to export, it's, I mean, it's the same and especially compared to the price point of this one, but the downside is you can't carry it with you if you don't carry this monitor and maybe a battery. Uh, let's do the export on this beast and save. And now we actually, let's see the battery. We started 41% battery now when we started this export. It's still quiet. I can't hear the fans from this MacBook Pro yet. I say yet because I'm pretty convinced it's gonna take off soon again. But it's really impressive that the fans never even turned on on these MacBook Pro. And yeah, now it's up flashing on yellow here on the temperatures on the CPU cores. And we are only up to 9% on exporting this five minute video. It took two minutes, 42 seconds to export, two minutes and 42 seconds to export. So it's about the half time of the length of this video because the video is five minutes long. Let's see if it actually takes longer time to export the video from this MacBook Pro from 2019 compared to the length of the actual video. When we do the transcode to proxies, it took four minutes and 10 seconds. It took almost as long as the entire clip of the video to transcode. And so we are up to 24%. It's 25% on two minutes and 25 seconds. So this is about when these guys were done. Now this one is halfway and you can see the RPM of the fans are up to red. The CPU temperatures average is 90 degrees. The computer average is 63. And look at these ones. It's just crazy red. It's up to almost 6,000 RPMs. Imagine when you're working on this and you're gonna have a fast turnover. You just would like to put it into the computer. You do some fast edits, export and upload it to uh, YouTube, for example, and you can do it so much faster on these M1 processor computers. And where did we start on the battery? We started on 43% battery. Now we're done on 30% battery. 30% battery, it has consumed 13% of the battery. This is a brand new battery. 13% just disappeared during this export. 49% and we are done at four minutes and 45 seconds. So it took almost as long as the length of the video to export. The M1 Max are definitely just beating the crap out of this 2019 MacBook Pro that has been so good for, I couldn't even say all these years, it's just a little bit more than one and a half years since I got it. It's, I think I got it in fall 2019. I can't wait until the 16 inch of the MacBook Pro M1 is coming out because that is gonna be a complete game changer. I still like this big real estate that I'm getting on that 15 inch screen compared to this one. So back to that question, the one we had before, was I able to edit this video on this MacBook or Mac mini with the M processor without creating a proxy file first? Well, the answer is, Yes, I was. This entire video is edited on this MacBook Pro with the M1 processor, and I didn't create one single proxy file, and I didn't lose or skip one single frame when I played back the video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you in the next video. Over and out from Sweden, bye.